How's it going everybody? Jesse here with Redefine FX and today I'm going to show you how to make these swarming missiles in Unreal Engine 5.5 with Niagara and Niagara fluids. This is a completely real-time volumetric simulation. We're gonna cover a lot of ground in this tutorial, lots to learn, so let's jump right into it. All right, so I'm starting with a blank scene as always and I can right click and create a new Niagara system and just say create empty Niagara system, call it NS underscore missiles. If you want your particles against a black background, you can go to window, preview scene settings, environment, and uncheck show environment and set the environment color to pure black. Next, right click and add minimal emitter. F2 and rename it as missile particles. Under properties, we want it to be a GPU sim with fixed bounds. Now we need to give birth to some particles. So under emitter update, click on the plus sign and search for spawn. And we need the spawn burst instantaneous. And I wanna give birth to 100 particles with each burst. But right now they're all born on top of each other. So under particle spawn, again, plus sign and search for location. And we want a shape location. And by default, it's set to sphere. That's what I want. So the particles are born on the surface of a sphere. Now we just need to push them apart. So again, plus sign and search for add velocity module. You can just click on uh, fix issue here for the soul forces and velocity. And now if you play the timeline here, they should be moving up because the Z axis is set to 50, but we want them to spread from the middle out. So I'll set the velocity mode to from point and set the velocity speed to 50. So now they're just exploding out and I want them to fall down under the force of gravity. So particle update plus sign and search for gravity force module. By default, this is gonna be way too strong. So you can just set it to minus 50 so that they're just slowly falling down. We can also make their size smaller. So initialize particle sprite size mode set to uniform. I also want them to collide with the ground. So particle update, search for collision module. We can just lower the bounce restitution to 0.3 so they don't bounce off the floor as much. And finally, I want them to have more of a random movement to give it that swarm, sort of a beehive look. So under particle update, just search for curl noise force module. We need to lower the frequency. So let's try 20 and increase the strength to maybe 20. Okay, final number for now, 40 and 15. And let's just drop this into our scene and see what it looks like in here. We need to move it up. And you can hit G to hide all these icons. Okay, so not bad, this is working pretty well. We're gonna play with the lighting at the end. Okay, next we're gonna add the smoke and for that you need the set fluid source attributes module. If you're not seeing it here, it's because you don't have the plugin activated. So under edit, plugins, you need to search for Niagara and enable the Niagara fluids plugin. Say yes, it's gonna ask you to restart the engine. So just say restart now. And so now I can find it, set fluid source attributes. So this module just tells Niagara that we wanna use these particles as a source for the smoke and fire, but we still need an emitter for smoke and fire. And for that, we can right click and say add emitter and you wanna search for grid 3D and find the grid 3D gas master emitter. It may take a few seconds to load and then you should see the smoke in your viewport. And we just need to tell it to use these particles as the source. So under emitter summary, I'll go to source. And for the particle source type, I wanna say emitter. And the emitter binding here needs to be our missile particles. So you can just delete this and start typing missile and it's gonna tell you, you know, missile particles. Click away, let it update. And now you can see it's already emitting smoke out of our particles here. But the sphere source is still on. So here under sphere source, we need to uncheck enable to disable that. Let it compile. And now you're left with just the particles emitting smoke. They're just falling outside of the bounds of the simulation grid right now. So under simulation tab, even though draw bounds is on, I'm actually not seeing the bounds of the grid. And I found that this is because under quality overrides, 
Here it says override draw bounds as turned off. So we need to actually just turn this off and then it will listen to this setting here. So we can see the bounds of the grid and the particles are on the very bottom. So I'll just move the pivot on the Z axis to zero. We can even do minus 0.2, sort of. I want to have the particles be born closer to the ceiling of the grid here. And we need to expand it on the X and Y axis. 1200 by 1200 by 1200. Pressure solve iterations we can set to 10. This will give us just nicer simulation of the smoke. Uh, density buoyancy I'll set to 0 because I don't want the smoke to be rising up. And same for the temperature. Now when you look at this right now, it's not looking like missiles because the smoke is getting speed from the particles, so we're getting these puffs. But instead I want to get trails. And that's controlled under set fluid source attributes with the velocity scale. So this controls how much speed is given to the smoke from the particle that's emitting it. So I'll just set it to let's say 0.2 and you'll notice that I'm gonna get these smoke trails instead. I just think they're a bit thick, so for that we can lower the radius here to maybe just 7. And it's also good to randomize these values, so I would just click on this arrow here and say random range float and go anywhere from let's say 7 to 8. We can also lower the density so the smoke isn't as thick, so let's try 0.35. And I want to get some fire too, so under emitter summary we need to enable temperature, which will give us fire. You're still not going to see anything by default because we need to go under render tab. And here for render temperature we need to set that to black body. So it's working except we're getting way too much temperature, it's way too hot. So again under set fluid source attributes I'll just keep lowering this temperature to let's say 0.02. Okay, so 0.05 seems to give me that missile kind of look. And I think the particles could stay alive a bit longer. So under initialize particle, let's give them a random range float lifetime between, let's say, 7 seconds and 9 seconds. And if you want, you can have them be born more often, meaning the loop repeats more often under these system settings. So here under system state, you have the loop duration set to 5, you can set that to 4. And you'll get a burst of missiles every 4 seconds. And finally, I can increase the resolution a bit, 300. So I'm getting something like this right now. We're almost there, just final touches. Um, you can pause the timeline here so that it's faster to work. I don't want to see the actual white particles, so under spread render, we can just turn that off. I also don't want to see the bounce of the grid, so emitter summary, turn off, draw bounce. And perhaps the particles can expand even more, so for the add velocity I'll just set this to a random range again, between 70 and 90. And I'll increase the curl noise to um, 50 and 20. I'll turn off the directional light and go to create light point light right away make sure you search for volume and cast volumetric shadow increase the intensity to let's say 300 and the attenuation radius and as a final touch what i did was under collisions i just set the restitution to zero and friction to one so that they just land on the ground and don't bounce anymore and then under emitter summary forces you can lower the vorticity from 2.5 to 1 and this will give you nicer smoke trails that don't break up as much they just sort of maintain that line look to them longer which i thought looked a little bit better we covered a lot of different settings everything from standard niagara to niagara fluids fire smoke if you'd like to continue learning Niagara Fluids with me, I have a completely free Niagara Fluids crash course where we recreate all of these effects that you're seeing right now. And I go into a lot more detail covering all of the different settings for the fire, for the smoke, turbulence and all that. We create four complete effect setups, including this portal. I also go over the basics of some liquid simulations. This course is a lot of fun, so definitely check it out at redefinefx.com slash blast and grab it while it's still available. Thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.